Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. Look at that. Gizmo's awake. He's going <laughs> to participate today. Yes, you are. <laughs> hey, we've got a great show for you today. In fact, we did this show twice. We did this show twice. It was a 50-minute show. It was a killer. It was a long show. Yeah. I started doing all my magic on the computer and editing it, and there was a loud, mm, and some popping noises. And so here we are, much to her dismay, yeah. doing, doing it again for you. Just couldn't put that out there. It could have, buddy. What I you, couldn't put it out there. What do you think of my flying nun here today? Does oh. that look like flying nun? Yeah. Yeah, we've all, we're, we're doing it all for you again, so we're going to speed it up a little bit. That's a little bit too fast. So we're going to slow it down a little bit. We're just going to try to make no mistakes because believe me, if you stay till the end of today's video, you are going to see a whole gaggle full of bloopers because we are out of control. I don't know what the deal is and I'm sorry about it, but I think you'll be entertained if you watch them. Yeah, they're going to be entertained. Okay. Sure. Today, can you live in the villages if you're on a tight budget? What would you think of a shuttle service between the town squares? Mm, artificial grass on your yard, yes or no? And golf carts, should you have a two-seater or a four-seater? And lots more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions, we've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We went to a driveway concert, that was fun. Absolutely fun. And guess who the guest speak, uh, guest singer was? Well, that was Wally, yeah, our very yeah. own Wally. Our very own. Wally Sagita. <laughs> and he performs around the villages now. So we feel, we, we feel extremely lucky. It's that like we're, we were the, with the We were the famous. first to recognize his talent. Uh -huh. so. yeah. <laughs> he did a great job. Thank you, Wally. Yeah. And that's Ray Herford. Mm -hmm. Ray is the benefactor down there. He puts on these free concerts. You're welcome to come and enjoy and he usually has a great cause, like this one was a fire department. People chipped in and raised $1,800 oh, that's for the so fire nice. department. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, Ray. A reminder that we would love to answer your video questions. So send them in to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. And we might start a new segment. And I'm thinking about it. And I thought it'd be great if I throw out a question and we could get 25 of you to send back a video answer. But it's short. I mean, it can be five seconds long. It can be 10 seconds long. Just email it to that same address. For example, this week's question is going to be, where is your favorite place in the villages? And you can write back and you can say, you know, it's under the tree down the road from the Eisenhower Rec Center. Mm -hmm. Or you could say whatever. Mm -hmm. But keep it short, five to 10 seconds. Email it to us. And you might find your way onto our show. And most importantly, all videos, all questions, everything you send to us, all photos, videos, landscape, please. Oh, that's Be right. Because that's this right. guy here starts that's to right. go, ah! <laughs> You know, the golf cart video we did on Thursday, you guys loved it. And I'm so glad you did. But I had to throw out a whole lot of beautiful golf carts because the pictures were sent in a yeah. vertical format. It just didn't fit. Yeah. So sorry about that. Everything you send in horizontal should be fine. Highest resolution possible is always good because mm -hmm. when people watch it on their big TVs, you don't want to look like a big pixel face. <laughs> so send it in yeah. horizontal format and as high resolution yeah. as you can. Yeah. This week's viewer video question is from Christy. Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is Christy from the northwest suburbs of Chicago. As you can probably tell, it is cicada season here and they are awake and chirping away. I was wondering, now that you live in Florida full time, are there any noises from Indiana that you miss, either nature or man-made? I'd love to know the answer to the question. Thanks. You know, we had lots of creeks in Southern Indiana. If you've ever been to the Smoky Mountains, you've seen those beautiful creeks. I love the sound of that rushing water. Yeah. Yeah. Here we don't have it. But I, I was referring to things I don't miss. Honestly, we had really nice neighbors. We liked them a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had a bunch of kids. I mean, mm -hmm. a whole a whole bunch of kids. And they would hoot and holler. You know, they didn't play like normal kids. They were screaming and hollering. And, oh, it was, it was like fingers on a blackboard for me. She didn't mind. <laughs> no, I, being a kindergarten teacher, it kind of, uh, my tolerance for it was a lot higher than yours. Or lower. What is it? Whatever. Higher. Anyway, uh, but you know what? We also had five 
grandkids, and they're in one family, so I'm sure the neighbors of our Oh, grandkids. our grandchildren are, they're, they're <laughs> our nice. angels. They're angels, right? Yeah, they're an angel. That's right. What I miss is the sound of our woods. When we opened up the back door, we went on the patio, you can hear the cicadas, the little birds chirping, you see the squirrels running around, you'll see occasional... Well, in the night after those yeah, kids yeah. went inside, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see a little bit of wildlife right outside. <laughs> they don't watch, room. they don't watch this. Oh, no. But anyhow, um, I miss that. But I know uh, we can hear that at the preserves. Oh, we get sure. we got a lot of noise out there. Yeah. You yeah. know the crickets, the uh, cicadas, the bullfrogs, the even the alligators go. Burr. Yeah. Oh, the first time I heard a, uh, a tree frog on our window the first year we were here, I had no idea what that was, and I was that pretty much scared me. But uh, I love hearing. How those about guys those cranes now? flying over all the time? Love that. They are vocal. <laughs> Yes, and it's yes. a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this next question is from Alma. Hi, Jerry and Linda. I know you are both retired teachers. I am too. Do you miss teaching? Did you ever consider substituting in Florida? I hear they need teachers uh, in Florida badly. Well, yes, we were teachers. We both taught for 33 years. Uh, I miss some aspects of it. But for the most part, I love retirement right now, so I don't miss it right now at all. And uh, as far as substitute teaching, oh my goodness, no. <laughs> they abuse substitute teachers. Yeah, they switch names around. They tell the teacher, they've, we've already done we've that already chapter. Done that. You know, they haven't done that Whatever. chapter. Yeah. You know, and besides, substitutes only make. I think maybe eighty dollars a day. Yeah, if you're going to substitute, you might as well stay teaching. That's right. If you you're going to retire from teaching and be a substitute teacher, yeah. you might as well keep your job and keep your benefits. Your benefits and the yeah. and the pay. But uh, I, no. my principal, by the way, the last ten years I taught were the best ten years of, of my teaching career. I loved it, and love the kids. That's the best part. But my principal said one day when I was talking to him, like, you know, I really, I'm going to be sad to retire, and he said, Jerry. Nobody that's ever retired has come back to me and said, I made a mistake. <laughs> They're all happy, and that's he's true. right. Yeah. So thank you. That was Steve Griffin. Yes. Steve's getting close to retirement. I'm yeah. not sure. Maybe he can come on down, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is from Nelson Lackings. He wants to know what happens in the square when there is inclement weather. Mm. Is it inclement or inclement? No, inclement. Okay. Uh, when there's bad weather, what happens in the squares? <laughs> And good question, but they have music 365 nights a year. If the temperature got brutally low, let's say 32, 34, 36, mm -hmm. yeah. they might uh, cancel it. But other than that, it goes on, and it even goes on if it rains. But if there's lightning, they'll shut it down for 30 minutes. Yeah. And if no more lightning occurs, boom, they're back at it. Right. Yeah. And, and Brownwood has an overhang. It has a, oh, yeah. a big structure that people can get under when it like rains. a big awning. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, Spanish Springs and Sumter Landing don't. But they have a few umbrellas. They do. They do. But, uh, you know, when it gets too windy, and, and of course, during the hurricane, that one or one or two times we've had to, we, we probably closed down then. Yeah. But for the most part, it's open, and we are right. enjoying it. Yep. This is from Steve in Minnesota. I noticed in your ride-along videos that some of the villages have concrete street curbing throughout, while other areas do not. I think the curbing looks nice and gives a more finished appearance. What are your thoughts about the lack of consistency? Well, I think the lack of consistency is during, I think the villa areas don't have curbing. Uh, just uh, ba basically our neighborhoods do. I like the curbing. I think it's pretty, and I, I do think it's a polished look. Um, I don't know the pros and cons to either or, but what do you think, Jerry? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm, I think you're 100% right about the villas, but down south, we don't always know what happens in the new areas because we, we don't get down there that much. Mm. So I'm not sure. But up here in the villas, the drain is in the middle of the street. Mm. And here at our neighborhood, the drain is in the curb. Yeah. And it works wonderfully. We've never had a, any water standing mm -mm. in our street that I know of. Five years we've been here. But we got a, an email from DeLuna, and during the last rainstorm, which was, I think, one hour of really hard rain, yeah. they had water pooling in their streets all the way up to their driveways, oh. and he sent those videos. Okay. So uh, I don't know if that was a blockage in the drain or a design problem or what, but we actually plan to go down there and talk to those folks, yeah. if they'll let us in just a little while and uh, see what happened and 
Hopefully they can get that straightened out. That would be terrible. It would be. Anna in Cincinnati writes, assuming I don't have a mortgage, how much money do I actually need to live in the villages? I'm quite thrifty and live well within my means. That is a great question and one that's really hard to answer. We did have a response from a lady or a person named Ill Tax. I assume that's Illinois Tax, mm. which a lot of people complain about. And they say, I live in the villages since 2001. I do not have a mortgage nor a bond. My monthly expenses are less than $1,100 a month. It includes all expenses except car insurance, which is about $130 for two cars. Full coverage on a golf cart is $75 a year. Wow. It's always hard to talk about money, yeah. which is our n most popular topic. That's right. Because people have different needs and wants. Now, she has learned that since her home's paid for, she gets by on $1,100. Does she have Spectrum Cable, 200 bucks plus a month? No, Probably not. No. You know, does she have a, a spouse and two cell phone plans? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Does she cut back on a lot of those things? Yes, you may not want to. If you want to have all the frills, you're not going to be able to live on $1,100 a month. But she does. So I guess technically that answers your question that yes, if you're thrifty and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit, you could probably do it. Yeah. If you own your own home, and I'm betting that ill tax is from up in the original area. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone else think that a shuttle running between all the squares would be a good idea? I think it would increase the circulation throughout the village's shops and restaurants, etc., and bring golf cart limited villagers to further destinations they wouldn't normally visit. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think they should implement a taxi service or a trolley service going back and forth through the villages to drop off people, especially those that don't have a, a golf cart or can't yeah, drive Yeah, they have a, a whole fleet of a whole fleet of trolleys up there sure. at, up at yeah. uh, Sumter Landing. Let's use those. They're beautiful, too. I really like those. Yeah. Here's a suggestion. Let's start a trolley run. Start it in Spanish Springs on the hour, maybe. Pick up your people that want to go south yeah. and stop at Sumter Landing. People get on and off. Go down to Brownwood. People get on and off. Go to Sawgrass. People get on and off. Right. Turn that thing around. Come back. Get off at Brownwood. On mm -hmm. or off. Up to Sumter Landing. Yeah. And just do that. Of course, it's money. It's going to cost. They might yeah. have to charge $2 a ride, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But that would be neat and yeah. uh, a service for people that don't drive or don't have cars. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great <clears throat> idea. Okay. Let's, let's get that rolling. This person writes, I watch you all the time. Does anyone have AstroTurf? Is it allowed to have fake grass? Can you do a review on the entertainment in the squares? Well, we we don't do reviews on the entertainment because we, we would only be positive and yeah. uh, that wouldn't help you at all. Mm -hmm. We always promote the people we like anyway and uh, the other ones, we don't want to rain on their parade. But as far as the AstroTurf, Linda did some checking. I did call the ARC, <laughs> the Architectural Review Committee, and they said, absolutely not. You cannot have AstroTurf turf in your yard. Uh, in the front yard, there's an easement, and you can't, you can't cross over that. You can't have anything else rather than grass, because they may have to dig up that area for some reason, or something was going wrong, there, plumbing, whatever, uh, irrigation, whatever. But you could, you could have AstroTurf in the backyard if it was for a putt-putt. Putting green. Putting green. One, one, one little putting green. But you couldn't do the whole yard, though, because no. in the back of everyone's yard mm -hmm. is an easement. Yes. You can't cover that easement with anything because yeah. they may come in and dig it up and they'd destroy your putting green and you'd be mad and uh, they'd be mad because they had to spend extra hours oh, yeah. doing it and nobody would feel good about that, so no. But listen, whatever you do, if it's going to be an expensive proposition, consult the ARC. Yeah. Always consult them. Even if you think you can do it, or your builder told you you can do it, or your neighbor told you you can do it, contact the ARC and it will solve you a lot of headaches. It, They'll let you know. Yeah, absolutely. This is from Vicki and Joel Rutan. We just purchased in Newell. Now for the next big purchase, is a two-seater sufficient, or is there enough times when you would want to pick up friends or when relatives visit to have a four-seater golf cart? 
you know, that was a question we kind of mulled over too when we got here. We said, oh, you know, when our grandkids come or our relatives come, we'd love to have four seats. So, you know, we looked at them. They're quite long. It may take a lot of space in your garage. But um, we prefer the two-seaters and two carts. That way he can have a couple grandkids with him and I can have a couple grandkids with me and we can shuttle or, you know, we caravan. Them in. <clears throat> we need another strap in. They're tiny, so we bring out the... I, she just fed me some uh, um, this, cinnamon roll. This happens when he has sugar. It, it gets caught in his throat. He's, I think he's allergic to sugar. You I, I think I am a little bit allergic to sugar, but that's how would I attribute my slim physique to that I don't eat a lot of sugar. <laughs> so anyway, we uh, prefer the two-seater, but to each his own. We have actually seen golf carts that have a, 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 a what, six-seater? We've seen with three rows before. The regular carts that people convert to four seats are not much longer than a regular cart, if any. But they're not comfortable, especially for big people. No. You get in the back of there and you got to put your legs over to the side and your heads are got to be down like here because when you go up here, you can't see anything. No, you couldn't. So you look like, I look like Dumbo riding in the back of one of those uh, <laughs> converted four seaters. So I wouldn't do that. Yeah. A lot of people do. Yeah. And it'd be great for hauling grandkids, except for the fact that you'd be scared to death they'd fall out. Uh, I would be really scared. Yeah. I would. I would. But get those, <laughs> if you've got the money and you've got the space, get the front-facing four-seater like our buddy Mike has. Yeah. And uh, that's why we don't have one. We just usually say, hey, hey Mike. Mike uh, <laughs> we me. got some relatives there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awful nice of Mike. But uh, we prefer the two-seater, but a lot of people have four-seaters. A lot of people do. The next uh, question is from Patricia Smith up in the village of Woodbury. Hello, I'm going to be a new villager this month. My question is, who do you ask if you can have a Class B in your driveway? Class B would be a small RV or van about 22 to 25 feet long. Is this allowed or would you have to store it? You cannot have an RV in your driveway. We have the official response from the district adopted rules. Campers, Winnebago's, and other RVs are allowed on the driveway not to exceed 72 hours, provided they are not plugged in or inhabited. This allowance is made in an effort to accommodate the packing and unpacking of the RV. In other words, your cousin Eddie cannot come plug into your, your household electric and live out there for three days at a time. You, it's there for the purpose of get it ready, get out of there, yeah. bring it back, unpack, take it to your storage. Yeah which there is plenty of around the villages. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is from Jean and Lisa. Are there charges for activities at the rec center, like Zumba, yoga, etc., outside of normal monthly villages dues? You don't have to pay. You, when you go to your exercise classes, they're all free. Everything there is free, except if you go to a club that has, um, that you've joined a club or you're going to go uh, visit or whatever and do like maybe quilting or any of the arts, the painting or the, what's the other one you like? Oh, woodworking the, the club. woodworking, the club. I pay $90 a yeah. year dues mm -hmm. and I've got to pay those uh, yeah. next month. Yes. And that'll get me through another year. Mm -hmm. But that's because uh, those are extremely yeah. expensive to maintain and they supply you with yeah. sandpaper and some lumber and some other things. Right. And... and uh, there are fees on a few, like sculpting. Yeah. That clay is expensive. Right. Maybe the uh, stained glass, you know, you'd have yes. fees. Yeah. But your basic ones that you show up to and you participate. Free. Most, mostly the exercises free. Are, yeah. are free. I'm out of breath. I'm too, honey. I'm, <laughs> too. I'm ready to take a nap. Well, we haven't even got started. Uh, mm. uh, uh, mm. uh. They're from as far north as... <coughs> okay, here you go. You need a nap? I'm so tired. <laughs> it's so tired. It's a, it's a quarter to 12. Wasn't it that t-shirt that lady had? I don't know. No. I blew it. No, wait, look at me. Look. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Cedar sufficient, or is there enough times when you would want to pick up friends or when relatives visit to have a four-seater golf cart? 
you know, that's a little bit of a dilemma. We thought of that too. We thought, oh, wow, it would be so nice to have a four seater. And well, on our, uh, on our golf cart show the other day, you saw that one. I think it was. Oh a, my gosh. What? <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> when did that happen? Oh yeah. This is what we spend our extra money on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. These boogers. Jerry had these all over my kitchen. Take a look. Those are little baby roaches. No, not baby, giant, giant roaches. He had these all over my kitchen. They look real. Uh it's time for Out and About. This week, we traveled the massive distance of two miles to Square One Burgers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in the Pinellas Plaza. Yeah, it's a great place. Um, when we first moved here, we went uh, quite a bit. Now they had the $5 burger <laughs> night. And now it's $13 burger night. What? <laughs> but they are delicious. And they're also famous for their onion rings. They come with, uh, they don't, oh, sandwiches don't, but appetizer, there's one with onion rings that are like that tall, you know, on a big rack. Yeah. Oh, delicious. But we had a great time with some great friends and uh, we enjoyed our meal. Yeah, you know, uh, that burger is good, but it tasted a lot better when it was $5. I just got to <laughs> say that right now. Square one, you're watching. So I got the burger. I, I usually get a burger with American cheese, lettuce, pickle, onion, and tomato. Mm -hmm. And I got that with baked beans this time. Though she didn't really approve of the baked beans. Yeah. But uh, what did you get? I had uh, the cheeseburger and I had onion rings with mine. I usually like the black and blue burger. I really like the blue cheese crumbles and bacon on mine, but I didn't this time. But it was delicious. Rob got a cheeseburger with green beans, um, onion rings, and coleslaw. And Chrissy got a hamburger and french fries. Yes, and you know what? They also have gluten-free buns, which is great for those people that are uh, in, intolerant to gluten. So th th good for you, square one. There's the, re the um, receipt, and you can see it's a that is for four people. So before tip, it was sixty-five fifty-one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little a little on the pricey side, not not McGrady's pricey for a hamburger, but I mean it's it's yeah. expensive. Yeah. Um, but it was good. It's real I, good. You know, it's you know, her favorite. Yeah, I do. I do love that burgers. You know what I don't like? I don't like the prices of drinks. I think they're too high. I mean, I get a drink of water all the time because it, it's cheaper and it's better for you. I mean, there's no cost for water. But the iced tea, sweet teas, they're going toward three. Well, it wasn't $3. bad at Square One. I've got the receipt here. It was three twenty-five. What does that mean? Going well, that's bad. I mean, okay. you can buy a two liter of anything for yeah. you know two bucks usually yeah. in that neighborhood. Yeah. But the sweet tea is good. Mm -hmm. I used to drink diet tea. Now I've given up and I drink the sweet tea. And uh, as long <laughs> as they keep it coming, I don't mind paying $3 for a sweet tea. <laughs> it's funny you said diet tea. I never heard anybody call it diet tea, but I guess it is. No, unsweet. <laughs> unsweet. unsweet. Okay. Well, it's time for this entertainment in the villages. Boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get the newspaper, you should get the newspaper because it tells you all about the upcoming entertainment. And I love this section. It tells you all here what's happening at Savannah Center, the Sharon, and then Tierra del Sol. So starting with Tierra del Sol, that's the theater in here, uh, up in the Spanish Springs area, and it has a seasonal uh a subscription you can join and buy. Uh, there's four shows, and season eight is starting right now, so that's a great venue for about a hundred people in that little venue. And then at the Savannah Center, quite opposite, great big venue. And tonight is Rocky's Do Wop and Rock, and they're having um, that's at four o'clock and at seven. And then the Country Divas are going to be here September 30th. We went to Doo-Wop and Rock mm -hmm. last year. We're not going this year, but it, it's, it's good. It's a good show. It's a good show. And then at the Sharon, oh, that was the Savannah Center. At the Sharon is going to be on September 28th is Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then uh, on the 29th is Cimarron. So, and then there's great, great um, acts coming up. Clint Black is coming. So, anyway, great entertainment in the villages. Yeah. Start over. <laughs> that was a black bad one. <laughs> yeah, let me do that one. I love 
little, talking here. A little pause. Is that too much information? <laughs> Huh? Oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> the word scramble last week. So many of you got it. It was short. And I put in the right number of squares to help you out. So congratulations to you and to me for that. <laughs> and uh, the clue was Johnny is wild about these gals. Those gals were the delights. The name of this group is Johnny Wild and the Delights. And they are really talented. Uh, and Glad that you all got that. Here's this week's puzzle. Today's clue, about a hundred miles away, but can still thrill us here in the villages. Give that some thought. When you figure out the answer in the appropriate number of spaces there. Don't put it in the comments. Just let us know that you got it. Some of you are so witty with your comebacks. I like that. So there you go. And now it's time for sweet and salty. And my sweet is going to do the sweet. I am. This sweet comment is from Suzette Ison. Love, love, love watching your wonderful videos. You two are the most adorable, sweet, and kind people. You handle everything with such character, even the negativity we have to deal with sometimes online. It's like you're both so far above anything petty. It's so regal. Ooh. Yes. Regal. Thank you, Suzette. Oh, Suzette, yeah, you know that's what? That's very kind. That's so kind. I even had to put a giant heart on this one because... That just made me just smile so much when you wrote that to yeah. me. <laughs> well, we appreciate Thank all you. of you. And uh, a lady named Brenda Wood, oh. she watched our show and, and she thought she, so much of our show that she decided to comment. You are too loud and obnoxious. Cannot watch. Obnoxious. <laughs> Oops. I, I've been called obnoxious before. <laughs> she forgot the B. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, Brenda, we're, I guess we're not for everybody. We just, we, you know, we, we, we don't get political. We don't yeah. uh, use profanity. We try to be funny and friendly and informative. And uh, obviously that's not your cup of tea. So there are plenty of channels out there that you would probably think were not noxious. So uh, I've never been called loud before. <laughs> well, I think, you know, let's get real. Am I loud and you're noxious? <laughs> a shout out to Community Watch. Community Watch is an organization here that tries to help take care of us villagers. And they have a fleet of cars that run around all day long and all night long looking yes. for yes. situations and problems that we might need help with. And we got a call at 1 a.m. the other night, and I didn't recognize the phone number. I said, hello. And it was Beverly from Community Watch. Beverly, thank you for calling because she told us our garage door was open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's such a great service because you don't want things in your garage during the middle of the night. I mean, uh, heaven forbid if a bear came or snakes or anything that will... Or a two-legged critter. A in two-legged your garage. critter coming in. So, so thank you to Community Watch. I just yes. wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Mm -hmm. By the way, she's so, she's so sweet, isn't she? You know, we always talk about her sweetness. <laughs> I saw her fangs come out the other day. Oh. We get medicine for Gizmo, and he has stopped taking it. He doesn't like it. No. He doesn't want it, and it's kind of expensive. So she called to say, stop sending it. We did, we'd made the mistake of getting on a regular delivery, you know. Yeah, it wasn't really medicine. It was more like a, um, oh gosh, what do you call it? Supplement for his food to make his coat feel better and his skin. And he stopped eating his wet food because I poured on the wet food, and he stopped pushing the food to the side and even picking up dropping it out so uh we decided to stop the delivery and well i mean she's <laughs> on the phone she's on hold forever and she puts it on speaker so she can annoy me while i'm trying to watch a football game <laughs> and she's playing it over and over and over and she's getting madder every time it comes on and the girl comes on and any anyway, long story short she gives her a lot of grief about canceling and then finally she says okay i'll cancel it hold on and she keeps her on hold for a while she comes back and she says, I'll tell you what, we'll give you 20% off. And Linda says, no, you're not understanding me. We, we need to cancel it. The dog won't eat it. 
she goes, okay, hold on. And Linda's getting mad at her now because she's on hold again. Lady comes back and says, tell you what, we'll give you 30% off. And she says, sweetheart, what are you not understanding here? We don't want it. When she pulls out, sweetheart, look out. And the lady says, okay, well, let me get back to you a little bit. And she puts her on hold again. Mm -hmm. Steam's going. <laughs> out my ears. Oh. The girl comes back and says, just hold a while and I'll see what I can do about this. She goes, what do you mean what you can do? Sweetheart, you just give me that credit right now. And she, I've never seen her so forceful. That was awesome. Long story short, we didn't get the credit. We, they said, we've already sent the medicine. Yeah. So she said, if you want to send it back, you can. And we'll see about getting you a refund. But you have to call back. Yeah, we're going to give you a tracking number, and when we get the product back, then you can call us to see if we're going to get the get the refund. I'm going, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> it's time for shout-outs. We're going to recognize the friends of our channel. Now, these can be our top viewers from Facebook. They can be great commenters on YouTube. Or they could be the folks that push that little heart at the bottom and give us a donation for the uh, equipment fund. Thank so we love you all. Thank you. And uh, please send us in those pictures and questions and mm -hmm. videos, and uh, you can find yourself up on the Friends of Our Channel. Well, this is Bernadette and Bob. They're from Joyzy and say they looked all over Florida before deciding on the villages. They built a new home in the village of Richmond and will be full-time residents. Congratulations to you both. That's awesome. This is Ken and Karen. Boy, I'll bet they get teased about their names. They're from as far north as you can get in Michigan before you enter Canada. You can see they took us up on our recommendation to go to Donut King. <laughs> they were here for a lifestyle preview and say they can't wait to come back. Steve and Diane are from Minnesota. This shot is from the Minnesota State Fair. Boy, I love a state fair. We're going to have to go to Florida State Fair. We haven't done that yet. Mm -mm. They are eating a gizmo. What do you think about no, that? No, no, never gizmo. heard of that. Oh, no. Hide your ears. <laughs> Snowbirds. They say they'll be back here when the leaves fall off the trees in Minnesota. All right. Yeah. This is Dave Boturla. Now, Dave is a member, maybe the president of that Grateful <laughs> Dead Club here. You saw his golf cart in the golf cart video. Super nice guy. And look at this. He's jumped on the Salisbury steak bandwagon. <laughs> oh, no. You know, we put the beef stew out of business. You know, yeah, they, they, there was a rush. Get it now. So uh, <laughs> thanks, Dave. I hope you like it. Maybe uh, he said, oh, we won't get any more here. <laughs> That's always the trouble about promoting a restaurant or a product. You know, it makes it harder for us to get in there. <laughs> well, Les and Ann Irene sent this picture standing in front of Kilauea in Hawaii. They will soon be here for a two-month stay along with their dog, Blackjack, and hope to purchase a home while here. And you know what? It may happen. <laughs> that is one heck of a picture. I, I hope that's like a character-generated picture behind you. Otherwise, they may not be with us anymore. Mm. <laughs> All right, it's time for Gizmo's segment. Let's see if he's ready. Hey, buddy. Hey, sweetheart. I'm being very gentle with him. We had some criticism last week that I... Picked him up too hard, so let me pick you up real gentle. Are you ready to do your segment? Okay, take it away, Gizzy. When Beethoven was young, people used to tell him, you'll never be a musician because you're deaf. But he didn't listen to him. <laughs> You see, it was because he was deaf. Uh, Do you know what a sleepwalker's favorite snack is? <laughs> they like snorios. <laughs> I went to the shoe store the other day, and I was trying on some new shoes. And I told the, the salesperson, I said, it's too tight. It's just too tight. And she said, try it with your tongue out. And I said, it's still too tight. It is still too tight. <laughs> you know, this telling joke business is not easy. I need your jokes. I need some really good ones. So send them in. I'll see you next week. That's going to do it for this week's edition. Of Mailbag Monday.
Be sure to tune in for Thursday's show. We go on an outing to a local antique store. And we uh, go through there looking at all these contraptions and trying to figure out what they are. And it's, it was a good time. That was a fun show. Yeah. Mother takes her rolling pin and rolls her spicy dough quite thin. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here.